And now, especially at this time of our evolutionary journey, let us come together for our world healing prayer, the healing work so important to our White Eagle work. We remember the great need of our world, and we seek to still our mind so that we come into a place of peace and deep stillness, drawing closer to God in prayer. Let us open our hearts to the power, love, and wisdom of God. By the Christ light and love in our hearts, we call to the great angels of the Christ our circle. Being still, we feel their presence and their power. And now, with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest hearts, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star, a star of the Christ light, lifting all hearts into the eternal heart of God. By all the power of Christ within our hearts, we send forth the light to the world. We hold our beautiful planet in the healing light of the Christ star, and we hold within this healing ray the soil, the waters of the earth, and the air, and all nature, especially the human animal kingdoms. And we hold the soul of all humanity, as well as all those in the Ukraine, Russia, our global family, the United States, all are going through these changes strongly in the Christ light. And we see all those, the United Nations, all those working together for good in the heart of the blazing Christ star. And now, let us hold in the heart of the Christ star the soul of the Americas, the soul of the peoples of the Americas. May the light of the Christ star shine through the hearts and minds of the people of the Americas to bring healing to all humankind and reverence for all of life. And let us hold within this great healing star anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing. Silently, we name them now and see them radiant in this beautiful healing light. Please join me in our healing circle. Let us open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love, as together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star over Ukraine. Russia, the peoples, and the leaders. With hearts full of love and gratitude, we see a gentle calm and peace. Amen. Good morning. 
this reading from a White Eagle teaching is about the season of Lent. We have talked about the heavenly hosts and about those who had passed from the body into the realms of light. We spoke of the power that is within man, enabling him to liberate himself from the limitations of the mental and physical life. We explained the first necessity, that of becoming still within, tranquil in heart, and we took the simile of a glass of water, saying that if that glass be shaken, it cannot reflect a true image. In the same way, a breeze blowing over a lake causes the images within to become distorted. Thus it is with the human receiver. The brow chakra, the heart chakra, must be calm and still if a clear image is to be reflected. This applies not only to some object in the spirit life, but also to truth. To absorb heavenly truth, you need to train yourselves in calmness of mind and spirit. We might say that a very active or disturbed mind makes it difficult for the heavenly truth to be received. We are speaking of these things today because today is the first day of the season of Lent. This Christian church still holds much ancient wisdom, but the key to it appears lost. This is the season of Lent. We think the term is derived from an ancient word meaning to lengthen. Lent is the time when the days are beginning to lengthen in the northern hemisphere, when spring is promised, and Christians look forward not so much to the crucifixion which they know has to be endured, but to the arisen Christ. This is indeed a cause for hope, a glorious anticipation. Let us for a moment, in vision, see in the heavens, not the crucified, but the perfect body, the arisen Christ, with outstretched arms, glorious in the heart of the blazing sun. The arisen Christ, Christ the Son, the Son of God, the Son of the Infinite Father-Mother, the Son of Life. Let us contemplate that perfected human form. Why should Christ appear in a human form? Has it any meaning for man? Yes, it is not only a symbol, but a promise, a reflection of the spirit of man, inferring that man, too, is a son of God, and that man also will arise to the full stature of manhood and Christhood. Before man can arrive at that stage, he has to pass through the period called Lent, and during this period, he has to sacrifice his desires. Now the early Christian groups received instruction from the Great Brotherhood through their own particular channel of reception and they were taught what you are hearing in these days. You are a small group of brothers and sisters looking for truth. The truth which you seek is not to be found in any book. The ancient wisdom is rarely printed for all to read. It is unfolded from within man's soul. In those early days, Christian groups were taught, as part of ancient wisdom, the necessity for strict discipline and control of their emotional, mental, and physical bodies. These brethren met continually and often spent the night in worship of the great white spirit. Call it what you will. It is the source of all life. It is the macrocosm, the infinite. Man, whoever he is, knows this truth because within his own self, is a spark of that same divine intelligence and life. For this reason, man has always a desire for God. This is why, in the moment of crisis, man always cries upon God. This is an instinct, an intuition. Therefore, man has always been searching in various ways, often very peculiar ways, 
for the source, for the origin of life. In search of truth, he takes many paths, often going around in a circle back to the beginning. At last, he finds, he recognizes, he realizes the divine life dwells within his own heart. Help comes to you, as it once came to the early Christian brotherhoods, from the lodge above, from that center of light which is known as Shambhala. Above the earth are those evolved souls which have passed along the self-same way that you are now passing. They have absorbed and have unfolded truth within their own being, and by discipline and work, by service to humanity, have at last gained mastery over the lower self. We cannot tell you these things too often. So it is well to contemplate, excuse me, it is well to contemplate these things and to decide which way you are going. Should you decide to tread the path leading to the glories of heaven, remember you cannot compromise. Either a thing is right or it is not right. Having decided, you must abide by your decision and obey the rules or the laws. This means daily watchfulness. When Jesus said, watch and pray, it means watch your thoughts, speech, and your daily life. Do your best. <clears throat> Angels in heaven cannot do more. But if you rush and tear about and get excited, you are doing no good to yourself or to the world. By taking a slow, ordered path quietly, by not wasting any time, but doing your best with the opportunities that are given to you, you are following the path. This is so important, this well-ordered, quiet life. When you are tempted to rush about, pull yourself up, be still, and you will see how very simply little problems can be solved by taking control of the conditions that you have indeed created for yourself. You can control your future during this period of Lent. Not necessarily just the few weeks before Easter. We are using the word in its universal sense. Here is your opportunity for training, for self-discipline, for control of thought, word, speech. Here is your chance for attunement of life to the purest and highest ideals of cleanliness and purity on every plane of life. So we find that the early Christian church, or brotherhood, we prefer the latter word, taught the need for self-discipline, control of the physical appetites, of the emotions, of the mind, and the strengthening of the spirit during the period of Lent. In Lent, there are just over 40 days. Now, 40 is an esoteric number with an esoteric meaning. The Israelites wandered for 40 days in the wilderness, looking for the promised land. This represents a period of gestation. A child, before it is born, lies some 40 weeks in the womb. The number 40 stands for a period of waiting, of growth, of development, while the soul who has set its feet upon the path finds itself wandering in the wilderness and has to undergo the hardships of self-discipline and self-control, has to undergo tests and trials on all planes of life. Although you have to live a balanced life, choose your path carefully and so learn discrimination and discernment. If you practice the art of prayer, worship and open your vision and imagination to the heavenly hosts and breathe into your vehicles the divine light, the sweet breath of heaven, you will become pure. Such purity is essential for the soul who would find God, the truth, and perfect life. 
Thus you see how the period of Lent originated. All the same, we do not suggest that you limit the practice of self-discipline to any period, but see in Lent the meaning of the training and discipline of the candidate for the heavenly life. Thank you, Jeff, for the reading. It was beautiful. So Easter and Lent are important celebrations, Christian celebrations, in the period of time leading up to crucifixion and ascension of Christ is often overlooked or maybe just simplified to what I learned in Catholic school as a Catholic child growing up. What brand of chocolate are you going to give up for the Lord and for Lent? But it is the way of the masters to remind us of our true goal. White Eagle has said, every master has at some time walked the self-same path as you are now walking, and the attainment of mastership comes one way and only one way, by the path which Master Jesus trod, and which all saints and saviors throughout the history of the world have also trodden. It is the way of the Spirit, the patient, gentle, humble, tranquil, loving way of life. This is the way of which the Master Jesus spoke when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He did not mean Jesus the person. He meant the God within, the I am the I am who was and is and ever shall be. I am before the world was. I am the inner voice, the divine spirit within every individual which directs the way of life for that soul. Easter has always been a joyous celebration in the world. While it commemorates the death and resurrection of Jesus, it reminds us of the cycles in our own lives when old ways die to make room for the new. So each season of Lent, as we move to our Easter celebration, we're given an opportunity for transformation, for letting go of the past and moving forward into our next level of expansion and consciousness. Lent represents cycles with the conscious release of what no longer serves us so that we may discover new ways of living. For 40 days, this Lenten season, we can explore the pattern and process of rene release and renewal. Whether you're moving through a major transition that feels sometimes too enormous to endure, or you simply feel the calling within, the spirit within calling you to let go so that you can experience a greater life, the story of crucifixion will guide you on a clear, loving, perfect path. Our true spiritual evolution is calling us to be happier, more fulfilled, more on purpose, so that which doesn't match our next expansion has to go or at least change along with us. Now that at least personally, and I think for all of us, begins to make us really uncomfortable because we don't know what will fall away in the world or what will transform and come with us. You don't get to pick and choose what always stays and goes. And when the development takes place in man, he ascends. He ascends above the pettiness, the sorrows, the selfishness, the fears of the earth into a condition of tranquility and joy and eternal peace. Not that he passes away from the physical body necessarily, but while still functioning in a physical body, he may ascend at will to his Father in heaven. Therefore he knows God and God's life. Because he knows God and God's life and the meaning of the mysteries, 
He has but one desire, and this is to help his brethren who are still in the valley. He has developed a deep, compassionate love, and he longs to help those who are climbing up the mountain to the golden summit. This is what the masters, the great brotherhood in the spheres of knowledge and understanding are working for, to raise mankind from the degradation which it has fallen into to that of the golden life which it was in the beginning. Why did man ever leave that state of bliss, the Garden of Eden? Well, he left it to develop his God powers and his God consciousness, and he follows the path of spiritual evolution, descending from the heights into the depths of matter in order to acquire the strength and the wisdom of God within. And then he returns on the upward arc to rejoin the creator of his soul. Now during this season, we can take time for ourselves and see how a crucifixion is really a crossing out of that which is no longer serving you personally and your spiritual growth. So on a practical level, there are a few ideas that I've come with, up with that can help us in our daily lives. During this time period, we can choose to deepen our spiritual practice during Lent. Perhaps take a look, release, or change an area of yourself or your life you've been contemplating. You can create some special goals for selective areas that you wish to develop. Or you can research and find quotes from your favorite wisdom teachings or scriptures for this to help your journey. Now I have one that I think is helping with the entire global situation, but also personally getting up on Sunday to do a talk, and it's from a little unity booklet, and it's, I release my fear of moving forward. Now nature moves the caterpillar to transform into a butterfly, and we're similarly equipped for our journey of becoming. Yet despite our God-given powers of imagination, understanding, will, and enthusiasm, too often Fears hold us back. Psalm 34, 4 said, I sought the Lord and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Because the Bible is a study in consciousness, and on its deeper levels, its stories are symbolically rich for revealing the experiences, the situations, and growth and challenges that the soul encounters on its journey back to the Father's house. It represents an evolution of consciousness from asleep to awake and from awake to enlightened. So during this time, it's things we can consider for our Lenten practice. So in closing, I just want to say it's a blessing and privilege to be able to grow our I Am Consciousness within our White Eagle family and community. And I want to close with White Eagle's words. Before I do, being raised, as I said earlier, Catholic, every Friday night we do the rosary together as little kids, and all these things just sort of come back during this season, memories and things. There's a lot. It's been deeply moving just to go back and revisit things. So one thing I'd like to mention that I found is a book. It's called The Last Seven Living Words That Christ Spoke on the Cross. So I'll save that for another time, but it's really been uh, very moving just in how to contemplate our spiritual practices and our personal habits. So I close with White Eagle's words, the way to overcome little obstacles in life is really to set your mind and your thoughts upon the Lord God. These are the only words we can find to explain is simply the way of truth. Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God. Thou shalt hold the image of the Lord Christ before thee. And now, when once the soul absorbs that spirit, the radiation from the cosmos, he becomes so imbued with love that the details of everyday life 
automatically fit in. Here is your opportunity for training, for self-discipline, for control of thought, word, and speech. And here is your chance for attunement of a life to the purest and highest ideals of cleanliness, purity, on every plane of life. God bless you, and may this time be rich for you in deepening your overall understanding of Father, Mother, God, and life. So now, would you please join me in our communion as Jeff's going to lead us in the beautiful crystal bowl. And now, begin closing your physical senses, and together feel that you're rising, rising as on wings of light, into the very presence of the Christ star in your midst. Before you, see the communion table set, with a beautiful golden chalice with light from the heavens pouring in. And now, coming into our inner vision, is the beautiful presence of the great healer, enveloped in this beautiful, gentle radiance. His love, his aura, envelops us all. And coming to us, he raises the heavenly bread and the heavenly wine offering us communion of spirit with spirit. Join him in your soul body. Take the bread and the wine and feel this essence of the Christ spirit flowing through you. It gives us refreshment encouragement and light for our journey it comes around to each one of us touches your shoulder and offers you this holy communion and now we see within our temple his presence and a beautiful golden orb of light. And now he steps back into that light and moves to other areas in our global world. He gives us, as he slowly disappears from our vision, we're given the gift and blessing of heavenly peace. So the peace of Christ be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>